Right, hello everyone, here we are. This time I'm doing Gran Turismo Sport on the last FIA race of their mini series. So this is at the uh, the short track here, and this is my final, or my best lap of uh, qualifying. So you can see I'm getting around pretty well. Hitting those apexes where I need to be carrying a lot of corner speed. Um, it's a very short lap, normally you're looking at 130s but this one here is mid 40s i think so that's purple in the first sector coming up to the final corner here should be able to get just close enough to get a nice toe off this lamborghini so i think i'm just out of toe range i might yeah i'm just out of toe range here so here we go coming up to the line as you can see very short lap and a 43.5 and that gets me pole position by a tenth and a half So here we are on the uh, starting grid, as you can see. I'm in the Aston Martin Group 3. I actually chose the wrong one. I meant to get the Vantage, but in my rush, I chose the wrong one. So I was stuck with this one here. So it's a nice spread of cars throughout the field. So we've got Aston, Porsche, and then a Lamborghini as a top three. So it's nice that there's not one manufacturer dominating this. So we cut to a race here now, and um, yeah, I'll get a good start, get away. The bonus of uh, rolling the start, so you're pretty much out of torpedo range for the first corner. So I run a bit, bit wide on the uh, on the left hand there, coming round, and then I string together the next few corners quite nicely. So this race here, you have to run a hard, and it's fuel limited. I didn't realise there was um, so much fuel on this, which plays effect at the end. So I went, what did I go? I went soft. Hard, soft was my tyre strategy. And the um, the Aston is a very, very fast car down the straights, but then that costs you a lot of fuel because it drinks it. So there we go, first lap out. Extending my lead, braking nice and early. And as much of that curb as possible without getting a penalty. Easing on the throttle, coming out nice and wide to get a sweeper on this downhill right. Nice and early on the powers. This is a flat out right, left, right. As long as you get on that curb. So obviously purple, but it's only a second lap, so it's obviously going to be. Breaking just after 100 meter mark. Downshifting way too much curb there. I think that's the only time in the race I actually did that, but yeah, massively um, cutting the curb, but not actually getting a penalty. So then we skip forward here to lap four because I'm sure you don't want to watch me do a whole 26 lap race. So there's some fast forwards, there's some skipping. So here we are, lap four, and the guy in second has caught me up. A few mistakes and a few good laps by him and the Porsche goes past. And very nice clean move there. Absolutely no issues with that, which is super rare on public lobbies for Gran Turismo. But in this race, I have a brilliant race with the guy who's just overtaken me and the guy who's currently in fourth place, both in Porsches and very consistent, very fair racing, completely against what I thought it was going to be with a public lobby. So following the Porsche round, fast forwarding this bit a little bit, following the Porsche round and he's driving nice and tidy, not making any mistakes at the moment. I managed just keeping his slipstream here. So this is start bringing me back towards him. Coming down to the first corner though, and I think he outbreaks himself. Just leaving the door wide enough for me to get an Aston Martin through there. And a very aggressive cut across, just so he can't straight line. But no contact, in my opinion, a good move. And uh, away we go again. So fast forward it again. Going around on lap six so far. Just trying to stay constant because the Porsche guys, the guys in the Porsche, both of them, very fast drivers. So come up to here, miss my apex. Big load of oversteer in the middle of that. The Porsche sticks his nose up, but backs out of it because I think while I run wider, I managed to carry a bit more exit speed and just, just get ahead of him here. So breaking nice and early, getting onto that. The Porsche is super through that corner and this corner here. 
It just seems to have a lot more low speed grip compared to my Aston Martin. And then the Aston, like I said earlier in the video, really does open up its legs on these straights here. And pull a nice little gap. Even with a toe, I can still keep it constant. So breaking down here, I braked far too late there on that 100 meter mark. And you see how wide I've gone here, leaving a massive gap here for one Porsche. Does the other one? No, it doesn't. And I put into the pits at the end of lap nine here. So we've got my Aston Martin crew here. Going to do me a good pit stop. So taking off the softs, putting on the hards. I didn't refuel. I figured I'd try and try and get out as quickly as possible ahead of the group behind. And I did just manage to get ahead of third. So I've got clear air ahead of me. Fresh but hard tyres ahead. And I can get on to get a good outlap. Hopefully to keep my first position. So fast forward, as you can see, missing the apex, which really does hamper you down this, uh, in the mid corner, but it doesn't really hamper you down the straight because you do carry extra speed and coming out comfortably in the lead. Now, the guy I was racing dropped, dropped down to seven, but I'm guessing he refueled. So that takes the extra bit of time. Well, that's a Porsche GTRS. that's nice. Anyway, sorry, that was just a car which drove past me. You probably heard it. So missing apexes again here. Looking at my fuel, I can see I've got 22% here. So I'm going to run it to the end of this hard tyre stint. And then fill up for the soft tyre stint and run all the way to the end. So just try and be consistent. If you look at my times on the right hand side, that's three laps in the 45 ones and zeros in a row. And the laps before that. I mean, you've got, you got your pit ones, so you can't really count them. The three before that were high 44. So just all my laps so far, which you can see on the right-hand side, are within three tenths of each other, which, which is quite good going, really. So just trying to stay constant, keep it busy. The, the guy from the Netherlands behind me in the Porsche is 1.2, but he's obviously got a better run out of me in that corner. So, skipping the lap 16 here, he is now only 0.3 behind me. If you look at my times on the right, oh, big hit. But he doesn't send it into this next corner and leaves me a bit of room. So, my times on the right hand side, still saying constant. I'm guessing the guy in the Porsche with their rear motor have significant tyre wear advantage over me. So, they're making it work a lot longer. Coming into the last corner, semi defensive because I knew I was coming in on this lap. So, coming down into my Aston Martin, guys, get another quick one in with the soft tyres going on and filling up to the diamond. So, that diamond gives you a guide for how much fuel you need to put in to get to the end of the race. So, I always go a little bit ahead of it. So coming out in third, in third place, yep, nice big gap behind me. Leaders are currently 4.7 4 seconds ahead of me. So I've got to chase them down, but I'm hoping they make another pit stop somewhere along this race. So skipping lap 21, you can see it's fast forward. I did manage to catch up with them with a fastest lap, 43.7. And those two hampered each other by battling as well. Like They're fair drivers. They're not hitting each other, but where they're leaving each other room, they are slowing each other down. So the Italian in the Porsche pits from his hard tyres, so he's going to be putting on some softs for the last last four laps to really get it fast laps in. So I am following the guy from Holland, just inside his slipstream. What's that? 3.9 behind him there, halfway around the lap. Now, this guy only one stop, so I've got the better tyre strategy than him. I'm in the slipstream here, 0.25, coming down. I think I'm like a pro there trying to sell the dummy, but he probably wasn't even looking, he probably missed it all, but he left me just wide enough gap for me to get through. So I managed to get through there into the lead. Hopefully he doesn't dive me into the last corner here. 
or coming up, sorry. If you look at my times on my right again, all constant mid uh, high 43s to low 44, so very happy we've had that stint gone as well. Coming to the last corner, pulled out 0.7, so it shows the tyre advantage I've got over him. So coming down lap 24. Uh, okay, skip to lap 25. So, last corner here. And I wasn't paying attention to my fuel rate. And there we go. Warning. One point... No, one lap left fuel with one lap left to go. So, you can see me on the gauge in the bottom right. Lean it off just to try and get that fuel mileage. What I forgot to do was to upshift earlier. So, I am really redlining it, which is just wasting fuel. I had a three-second gap, I think it was, at the start of that lap. So I should have gone up to five, short shifted and saved my fuel. But as you can see, the guy from Italy in the Porsche catch me up 1.2, 1.1, one second. He's just taking time out of me massively here. Breaking for the last corner, just to get round, hoping that I've got enough fuel to get across the end and then run out of fuel on the last corner lose first place and just going to get pipped to third so end up finishing third place here disappointing but it's my own fault I should have um, managed my fuel better the other guys just race better than me I think it's something probably to do with their gaming seat so you, you can see third place comfortable gap even what with running out of fuel to fourth the guys in first and second brilliant race for them they race really fair really fast and it's one of the best FI races I've ever had. So, if you liked the video, let me know with a like. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.